to sit in the afternoons and just mull over his writings and just write and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite uh, passages. And I read that and I laughed because yes, that is exactly what I do. Um, it's hard for me to hang my own artwork on the wall because when I hang my own artwork on the wall, I'm constantly looking at how I could have painted an area differently. So I'm just gonna sharpen that pencil. Be a little bit more surface area. Um, because I don't need it to be super sharp, um, I just use a regular sharpener because this is a this pencil is going to be used on its side and I'll be allowed to get dull quickly. In fact, I want it to get dull quickly, so I don't need to go through the uh, labor of what I did with this pencil right here. Okay. And I'll put the cast shadow coming off kind of similar over here. Quickly smash in a background. So you may wonder why we put those initial marks and we glide them over the form um, if we're just going to be covering over it. Well, you can kind of like return to it um, to taste where you you can wipe it out a little bit and then you can reassert those uh, marks and you can kind of see it breathing through from underneath um, from underneath the drawing. So that's that's my suggestion. That's why I always suggest putting those marks in as you're really insisting on volumetric uh, and dimensional drawings. Okay, so let's go over now to that gentle half tone right here and let's correlate it with the sphere. So start, we have the background, we have the external contour, half tone, background, external contour, half tone. Here's our highlight. Our highlight runs in this triangular shape. So if you ever look at the side of a metal tea kettle, um, the highlight and the midtones, they always run the shape. They, they run in the exact shape of the form. So if the overall form is a triangle, that highlight is gonna be a little triangle within the triangle. Um, so you wanna think of that as you work. It always runs with the form. And I might even move my shadow shape over a little bit. Just to give it a little bit more mass, a little bit more presence, I should say. I'm gonna go like that. And pull away slightly. Now, if I really wanna clean up that highlight, I go in. So my eraser was a little bit dirty. I think I scarred the paper right there a little bit. Um, that's something worth mentioning. If you hold the eraser in your hand, uh, sometimes you run the risk of the oils of your skin getting into the paper, uh, such as I've done right here. Uh, I will try to get that out at a later point with, um, you could get it out sometimes with a razor or something like that, with a flat razor. Uh, but for the time being, I'm just going to let that little, that's, that's the oils from my finger getting into the eraser. So sorry about that. Okay. So that half tone, that half tone right here, it's a little bit too dark. So I'm going to go a bit lighter right there. Um, you can't have that half tone too dark. Otherwise the thing, uh, it just feels over rendered. Okay, we'll find the balance. Then going back to my backgrounds.
and I'm really going to dig in to get a sharp external contour there and then shade right up to that. So you see how that dark on light is really popping the light. So light is completely contextual. Uh, sometimes I say to students, a, a, a rule of painting and drawing, but it is not the only way of doing this, but a rule of painting and drawing is, how do you make something lighter? Well, you make it darker. So how do you make this appear to be lighter? You darken around it. Um, Again, I'm going to give you through the series of these courses um, some little tips like that, but then I'll be breaking those those rules as well. Because another way of making something lighter is just making everything lighter. Uh, it's kind of an advanced concept that we'll explore at a later point. But for our purposes right now, if you want to make the light on that on that cone lighter, then we're going to surround it with darkness. Getting back to my dull pencil that I hold on its side. And just going in with my finger. Just like that. Okay, now let's get this part of the background. I just let my backgrounds be random and scattered. I don't really care about putting in, sometimes some teachers, I had a teacher who said you had to go all the same direction, stroke by stroke. And I was miserable and I was sitting there for all eternity. Uh, felt like I was like paying penance for something wrong I did. And another teacher walked up and saw how miserable I was. And she said, she goes, and she snapped the charcoal and she said, just fill it in quick. And to this day, I'm still grateful that the teacher said that to me because otherwise I'd probably be still shading that same background so many years later. Um, but I just fill in backgrounds quickly at, if it's something of a quick sketch-like nature. And there we have it. And now let's, um, let's label this. So one, the dark on light, so the background, two, external contour, three, half tone, and four, highlight, five, half tone, six, shadow, deep shadow, um, shadow shape, um, seven, the shadow itself, eight, reflected light, nine, oh, let's do this again, nine, cast shadow. Um, so there you have it, the, uh, the geometric essence of all of drawing and painting. And if you can master these ideas, and they, they, they take, you could say in a way that you could spend a lifetime working on these things. Don't let that be daunting. Uh, let it be exciting for you that you know that you can apply this to everything around you, whether it is the side of a child's face, or if it is an army tank charging towards you, um, if it is a silo off in the distance, if it is, I'm at a loss, if it's <laughs> quite a, a round um, mountain that's coming up, uh, there, the geometric essence of all of these shapes in infinite numbers of combinations make up the human form. So if you want to draw and paint the human form, um, you really have to understand the flow of light over these shapes. So uh, a good exercise again would be for you guys to not only do this quick and as you see my hands quick and smudged, but you could get out some really, really sh long sharp pencils 
and you could do a really exacting study. I mean, a super precise, highly rendered study. And that would be a good practice for you. That would be something for you that would um, help carry over to other things that we will be drawing and painting. So with that, I'll leave you to it.